day. It's about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, today is the day Kanye is having his listening session, and he had an Apple listening session earlier this morning. The Locks were there, Fabio Foreign was there, Chance the Rapper was there, Jay Electronica was there, so everybody is out here in Atlanta. Now, this is now, a different form- album than, than two weeks ago, right? That's what they're saying? It's I, to- I guess we'll see. I'm sure, uh, I don't think he played the full, complete Donda album, and I know this is a really important one to him, because it's Donda, you know, after his mother. So I'm sure he wants to make sure he gets it completely the way he wants it to be. Now, Yee, have you heard any music? Yes. How does it sound? What does it sound like? What's different? I, I'm not going to lie. It does sound really dope. And, you know, because he's been doing gospel music, and he's always had that kind of gospel feel to some of his songs, I feel like there that's a, a big theme on here also. Give us something, Yee, to show us tonight. Is there any new artists on it? How many new songs? How many songs? I can't songs? do that. Who's on it? Tell us. I had to sign an NDA. So tell me and let me tell it. Well, I guess you can't because then that's still going against the NDA. (laughs) All right. (laughs) All right. But the former Gap CEO, Mickey Drexler, said he didn't approve of Kanye's 10-year partnership with The Gap, no matter how lucrative the deal was. And he was on Yahoo Finance Live. He said he actually advised Kanye not to collaborate with The Gap. He said, I probably shouldn't say this, but I told him he shouldn't do the deal because it doesn't make any sense, in my opinion. I have a lot of friends at Gap still, but it doesn't work for someone like Kanye. He's not a corporate person. And Gap is a big corporation. He said it's already a commercial success, though. It's a slow rollout, but, you know, he did put out that Yeezy Gap round jacket, and he said that uh, did $7 million overnight. He said Kanye's a smart guy, but he shouldn't have done it, and I don't think they should have done it either. But we can look forward to seeing some more pieces later this year. I don't know that gentleman. I don't even know who he is, but I think that was a dumb statement. I think what Kanye did with the Gap is perfect. I mean, Kanye makes clothes that are very expensive. But now for people that can't afford that expensive, expensive clothes, you're able to go to the Gap and get affordable clothes that still look dope, that's still stylish, and he still supports his call. Kanye remembers he's from he, Chicago. and he's he, made a, that, hmm? he made that stock go up. Yeah, so I think that was a smart move for Kanye because he's, he's satisfying his, his, his people that can't afford the expensive stuff, and then he's satisfying the people that can afford it. I think that's brilliant. It didn't... Um, Balmain do that at one time, too, with one of these things. They, they did a, a cheaper version that was still dope that sold out quickly. You know, a lot of high-end brands have done deals with, like, Target and That's other, uh, yeah. But it is, and then it can be, you know. But then sometimes you make another line that's more uh, not as high-end, yeah. and, and it can da- damage your brand also. So it's just a matter of doing the right thing. If it's dope, it's and, dope. And Kanye makes dope stuff. I mean, some of the stuff to me looks a little crazy, but it's dope. It, it is It is absolutely <laughs> pos- positively dope. All right. Uh, R. Kelly is saying that he's broke right before jury selection began in his sex trafficking trial. So prosecutors are going to be presenting evidence that he had sexual contact with Aaliyah when she was as young as 13 years old. And that was before the pair got married in 1994 when she was 15, according to a judge. And so there's all kinds of things going on here. They're saying that he's gained so much weight behind bars that he now needs new clothes and he can't even afford to pay for court transcripts. Uh, before his sex trafficking trial. They said his finances are depleted and the court has to give him daily copies of the transcripts. Another thing uh, is that there are these new allegations against R. Kelly. And this is about him and some boys that were underage who he allegedly met at McDonald's, one of them when he was 17 years old, that he groomed and assaulted back in 2006. His attorneys are saying none of this new evidence should be heard because the jury has not been investigated as to their views on same-sex relationships. When they do that questionnaire, they asked how you would react to somebody being in a same-sex relationship. They're saying that question wasn't on there, so it could be unfair to R. Kelly if the jury takes offense at homosexuals rather than pedophilia, which is what the alleged offenses were. Yeah, and I can't believe uh, R. Kelly's broke now. I mean, R. Kelly, is, is love, him, love him, like him, hate him. He still has a catalog that people still stream and listen to. It might not be streaming and listening to like they did before, but he still gets paid off. At that. all. He still gets paid off. And for he's that, got though. a lot of expenses right now. Let me tell you, I still a get, lot of legal expenses. I still get paid off some of the stuff that I produced 10 years ago, and it's not that much money, but I'm not R. Kelly, nor do I have the, the catalog of R. Kelly. So I'm sure— Do you have any legal expenses of R. Kelly? Um, okay. No, I don't, but he, I R. Kelly should, he should still be getting a lot of money, though. And it's been years and years of this. And then, you know, they pull this music, music off of so many services. I'm sure that hurts. I thought they know? put him back on. 
I mean, yeah, but they're you know how they have you on that playlist where you're featured. Mm-hmm. It's just not streamed as much as it used to be. I'm sure those numbers are way down. Mm-hmm. All right, Jada Pinkett Smith has introduced a show uh, called The Toughest Opponent that she is going to be producing. Red Table Talk Productions is producing that, and that's what Brandon Marshall hosting. As the focus of mental pressure on athletes has been in the national spotlight right now, this is perfect timing for Brandon Marshall, who's a former NFL player, and he had some struggles on the field. Uh, his career was on the line in 2011 when he did seek professional help and he was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. So right. now he's going to have his own uh, show, The Toughest Opponent, that's going to create a safe space platform for professional athletes. Shout out to Brandon Marshall. Mm-hmm. Yes. And Deepak Chopra has done his own deal, too. He has a multi-project podcast deal with Audible. So he's kicking off the collaboration with Deepak Chopra's Mind, Body, Zone, Living Outside the Box. And that comes out on September 16th. Okay. Also, Netflix is requiring COVID-19 vaccinations for employees, visitors, and all of that. So if you're going to come into their offices, you have to be vaccinated. And that's for any visitors to their headquarters as well. All right. And that is your rumor report. All right. Thank you, Miss Yi. Now, um, this morning they announced that the New York Auto Show, which is probably one of the biggest auto shows in the country, they canceled the audio sh- uh, the auto show for another year. So uh, that auto show is not going down this year, but it's okay because Carcella Atlantic City is going down. It's outdoors. It's 123 acres outdoors, so you have enough space so you can uh, safely move around uh, wearing masks and be safe if you would like. And we'll have some drink fresh juice there for you to keep your immune system right. And I also want to mention, by the way, there's a group of 11 organizations that are trying to help educate the baby after all that backlash that he got. And so they want to make sure that everything that happened can actually become a teachable moment. And so they want to, uh, and these are organizations that lead the fight to prevent HIV, provide care and treatment for people living with HIV, especially black LGBTQ people across the Southern U.S. So they want to make sure uh, uh, that they actually are able to to create this dialogue from this. So Absolutely. we'll see if he takes them up on that offer. All right. And shout to uh, French Montana. Shout to Little Uzi Vert, Fabulous, uh, 50, Currency, and Little Kim. I, I spoke to all of them uh, the last couple of days who are shipping their cars down to the car show. Hopefully you get your tickets. It's going to be a family fun day. And I can't wait to see you guys next Saturday. I think we got like nine days left to the Carcella car show. All right. Now up next is the People's Choice Mix. Get your request in. Revolt. We'll see you tomorrow. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We'll be right back.